in last classes we discussed about the gauss gauss's law in today's class we will be uh, discussing about the faraday's law ampere's and ampere's law okay so along with faraday's law we will be discussing about the lenz law okay so if you have any questions please ask me during the lecture and get your uh, problems clarified okay um also i want to mention to you regarding the mid exams okay so since i have not covered you the mid exam i mean the content up to the mid exam level i will hold the exam after i have covered that lecture content okay so uh, until uniform plane waves section i will uh, i will ask the, uh, for the uh, mid exam okay so regarding the mid exam i will be discussing i will be um, asking questions about the electric field content magnetic field content um and uh, i will be asking about the maxwell's laws then uh, i will be asking about the uniform plane waves currently in this class with uh, lateral entry electromagnetism students i have discussed the electro electric field magnetic field uh, now i'm um, in the phase of entering the maxwell's laws okay so in order to explain the maxwell's law i'm trying to explain the uh, the other laws that are important uh, to do that so gauss's law faraday's law and ampere's laws okay so after we learn about these laws we will be uh, learning about the maxwell's laws so in the mid exam i will be asking questions up to that point apart from that uh, you lateral entry students you will be um, um facing the exam online right so mid exam will be held for you online and uh, once it is held uh we i will um enable the safe browsing option okay so i will uh, share with you a safe safe browsing configuration that configuration uh, via lms i will share the safe browsing configuration via lms you can access the your paper via lms okay via lms and um you need to uh, you need to join the online zoom meeting you need to join the online zoom meeting uh, have your uh, you know video i mean web camera on you need to have your web camera on and then uh, uh, also you need to install a safe browsing application right so this uh, safe browsing application you need to install okay so once you are installing this application this application is of uh, about 250 mb as i remember so it takes a lot of time to install so therefore uh, installation takes a lot of time okay so therefore you need to install it before coming to the exam okay so don't tell me you haven't installed it okay you need to install it before coming to the exam apart from that uh, uh, i will provide you a tutorial on how to uh, use the safe browsing option okay so i will give you a small tutorial how to use the safe safe browsing option i will show you using a, a certain mock exam i will 
use a certain mock exam or quiz and I will use that to show you how to use the safe browsing option. Okay. I hope it is clear to you. Do you have any questions? Right. So, so in today's class, we will be continuing regarding Faraday's law and length, Faraday's laws and Ampere's law. I hope that you remember regarding the Gaussian law. Right. So, in order to just complete this um, discussion, I will also mention about the Gauss's law and its mathematical notation, um, because I think I. Uh, I have mentioned that in the last class, but uh, I think I have uh, not like mentioned to you the uh, mathematical forms separately or in a more uh, organized, uh, I mean, in a separate manner. So I will mention to you now regarding the Gauss's law for magnetic field. So the total magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero. Okay, the total magnetic flux through a closed surface. Right? So we have to consider a closed surface. Uh, so the magnetic flux across that closed surface is zero. So let's assume that we have a closed surface and we have like magnetic magnet inside it with north and south pole and uh, the magnetic field lines that occur in this magnet will be generated in symmetric symmetrically around the magnetic axis right around the magnetic axis the magnetic field lines will be symmetrical right so I will form the magnetic flux lines like this, right? So, once we have magnetic flux lines, which are like this, we also have magnetic flux lines, which are going out from the closed surface, right? So, I need to actually draw it in a very symmetrical manner. Okay, so we have some magnetic flux lines that are going out. So, uh, the Gauss's law says that the net magnetic flux, the net magnetic flux is equal to zero. So, the net magnetic flux is equal to zero. So, the net magnetic flux means the total magnetic flux which is going out is zero, right? So, the total magnetic flux that is, that is going out that is going out is zero. Okay, so that means like there could be some magnetic flux that are going out and there could be some magnetic flux that are coming in. So this magnetic flux line uh, in this location seems to be going out, but that magnetic flux line comes back into the closed surface. So once I take the net magnetic flux that is going out from this closed surface, that is equal to zero because the magnetic flux line that is going out is equal to the magnetic flux line that is coming in. So because of that, the net effect is zero because once we add the two magnetic flux lines, uh, then the net value is zero. I hope it is clear to you. If it is not clear, please let me know. Then we have the integral form, integral form and the differential form. 
right so the integral form we can uh, show using this mathematical equation we have the integral form like this right b dot a equals zero right b dot d a equals zero okay so in here the integral means the closed closed surface integral closed surface integral okay closed surface integral uh, so in here we are taking the integration along the closed surface okay we are trying to find the magnetic field components which are going out along the closed surface okay so we are taking the addition of all the magnetic field components that are going out from this closed surface right so in order to take the addition of all those magnetic field components that are uh, going uh, across this closed surface we need to take the integration i hope it is clear to you and in here we are taking the magnetic flux density or magnetic flux magnetic flux density value and we are multiplying it with the area vector unit or the perpendicular area vector so the perpendicular area vector that okay so perpendicular area vector so this this is the area vector that we can draw for each uh, surface each unit for for each unit area in the surface okay So this is the vector that we can draw for each unit area in the surface. Okay, so there's a surface like this. Right? For this surface, let's say this surface looks like this. For, each, for this surface, we can draw unit, you, you, we can draw unit area surface elements, right? So these surface elements are having an area of dA value and the perpendicular vector that we can draw to this area element we call as da vector the perpendicular vector which we can draw on top of this surface area element of area value da is known as da vector so da is a very small uh, component area component that we can draw for this surface this is like the very unit area component that we can draw for this surface. The dA is the smallest area component. Okay. So uh, by taking the integration, by taking the dot product between the magnetic field component and the dA vector, we can take the total magnetic flux, which is going outward from this surface. Right. So the magnetic flux can go out at any position in this surface right so we can draw magnetic flux lines that are going out at any point in this surface let's say the magnetic field lines are going out from the surface at this point right it could be in a certain direction right so what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the component of the magnetic field along the perpendicular direction to this surface area Right. In order for us to find the perpendicular component, we need to take the dot product between this B vector or the magnetic field vector. Magnetic actually this is magnetic flux vector, right? Magnetic flux density vector and the area vector. We need to take the dot product between those vectors to find the component which is perpendicular to the surface area. So the component of the magnetic flux, which is perpendicular to the surface area, gives the uh, flux line, which is uh, acting on this on this point in the surface, right? Which is acting strongly on this point on the surface, right? No other components of the magnetic field act strongly on this point. Only the perpendicular component acts strongly on this point. Okay. So that those things you can, I hope you can understand. If you cannot, please let me know. The second thing is differential form. Differential form. The differential form of this uh, Gaussian law is given by uh, 
delta dot b equals 0 right delta dot b equals 0 so this means that the divergence of the magnetic field is 0 right so this means the divergence of the magnetic field is 0 and next uh, it also i mean i can also give it using other uh, other uh, other words so this means that at each point at each point in in the volume there's uh, no net magnetic flux so if we consider each unit volume if we consider each each vo unit volume okay so at each at each point at each point in the uh, closed surface in the closed surface in the closed surface uh, there's no net magnetic flux okay so that is regarding the Gauss's law. If you have any questions, please let me know. No, we we will be moving towards the Faraday's law. Okay, so Faraday's law. So the Faraday's law is defined as the electromotive force, the electromotive force, electromotive force, or this is also called as electric potential. The electric potential, Right, so electric potential is like the voltage, electric voltage, right? It's like the voltage uh, that is created, electromotive force that is created around a closed path equals the negative the negative rate of change the negative rate of change of the total magnetic flux through the surface bound by that path This can be written in mathematical uh, form. We can write it in mathematical form in terms of integral form and the differential form. In the integral form, we can write this as the vector E dot dl is equal to the minus daba over daba t over the surface area. Uh, the vector b into d a vector okay uh, the differential form we can so in here the uh, integral form is form the the first integral is over the uh, line the it is a line integral so i will explain using a visual diagram so next i will also write about the dif uh, the differential form the differential form uh, is defined as the curl of the E, 
curl of E is equal to minus double B over double T. Right. So what is the understanding of, of these equations? Okay. So, um, so Faraday's law uh, is used uh, is used to represent the electric potential that is generated in a certain uh, surface or in a certain loop once we apply a varying magnetic field across the uh, across that loop right so let's say that we are applying a certain varying magnetic field across this loop okay so we are applying a certain varying magnetic field across this loop okay so this b is varying with the time so we are applying a varying magnetic field right so once we are varying the magnetic field uh, an electric potential is generated across this uh, loop okay uh, however the electric potential that is happen occurring or getting generated across this loop is opposing the generation opposing the direction of the electric field that is generating okay so what i mean is like due to this magnetic field due to this varying magnetic field uh, a certain electric field is generated right so that generation of electric field is along the direction of um along this along this direction right we can find it using the right hand rule right we can find it using the right hand rule so the the electric field that is generated will be along this direction right however the electric potential that is generated will be in the uh, opposite direction uh, because the uh, system cannot create energy as the system cannot create energy system can only create or just convert the energy into another form right so therefore right the system will only generate the electric potential in this other direction which is opposing the direction of the change uh, opposing the direction of uh, the change in the magnetic field right so there is a direction along where we are changing the magnetic field however like we are uh, uh, we are we are, we are generating the potential in the opposite direction to the uh, generation uh, the opposite direction to the direction where the magnetic field is varying right so once we are adding like magnetic flux uh, uh, once we are changing or once we are increasing the magnetic flux with the time across this metal loop the amount of electric potential that is generated will be uh, will be uh, will be in the opposite direction to the uh, will be in opposite direction to the uh, uh, to the uh, varying magnetic field, right? So I will explain that using another diagram. Okay. So if we have a certain magnet, right? We are applying that magnet over this metal loop. Let's assume the magnet is in this form. Okay, so the magnetic field is generated along this direction. The magnetic field is going out through this metal loop. Okay, let's assume this is a metal loop. The magnetic flux lines are going through this metal loop. Right? 
So the magnetic field lines are getting generated across this metal loop, right? So, however, by nature, the loop, the loop, the loop resists the change in the flux, right? Resists the change in the flux. So by nature, once uh, there's some change in the flux, the nature will resist that. So due to that, the electric potential that will be formed will be uh, formed in such a way that the produced, produced electric potential will generate uh, magnetic field lines in the opposite direction to the initial magnetic field lines right so the new newly created magnetic flux will, will oppose the initially uh, i mean the, the sorry newly created electromotive force will be generated in this direction such that it will uh, it will uh, form a certain magnet magnetic field in the opposite direction to the initial magnetic field right so the uh, the electromotive force that is generated will create uh, will be created in this direction such that the current will be flowing in this direction the current in the loop will be flowing in this direction so once we apply a certain uh, you know like magnetic field across this loop a current will be generated in the reverse direction. Thank you. Okay, so the current will be generated in the uh, reverse direction uh, such that it opposes the change in the flux. Right? It opposes the change that has been uh, made in the flux. Okay, so but that is basically regarding the Faraday's law. So you can read more about Faraday's law on your own and try to understand the Faraday's law. So if you have any questions, you can ask. Right, I hope it is clear to you. So once we add some magnetic flux and change the magnetic flux across a loop, uh, the 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 electromotive force that is generated will be generated in the in such a way that it opposes uh, the direction of the or it opposes the uh, magnetic field flux that magnetic flux. Uh, the change in the magnetic flux that was introduced into the magnetic in, into the loop so therefore although we expect the uh, the electric field electromotive force to be generated in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the in the uh, in this direction although we assume that the electric field will be generated in this direction uh, in uh, uh, electric potential will be generated in this direction. Uh, actually, the electric potential will be generated in such a way that it will oppose the uh, change that has happened to the system. So, therefore, electric potential will happen in the in in the opposite direction. Uh, so, in in the opposite direction to the direction that we expected. Uh, it to be created so because of this phenomena we are having a minus sign in front of this electromotive force expression in the faraday's law this minus sign is given to denote that the electromotive force will form in the opposite direction to the uh, opposite direction electromotive force will be formed in the opposite direction to the anticipated direction okay to the an anticipated direction
okay so uh, what does this mathematical equations mean right so there's a line integral in this left hand side where we take the uh, total electric electric uh, field that is created electric field that is created around the loop right so this integral is a closed integral closed integral where we take the integral along the loop right so the closed integral where we take the uh, integration along the loop right so the loop uh, around the loop right so we take the closed integral around the loop and then uh, we take uh, the integration of the electric field that is generated along the direction of the loop. So we take the dot product of E and DL to take the component of the electric field that is generated along the direction of the loop. Right. So now you know that electric field is generated and the uh, the direction of the uh, I mean, uh, direction of the electric field or the component of the electric field along the metal loop needs to be taken. So the vector which which is denoting the loop, uh, a vector which is along the loop is denoted by DL, right? So DL vector denotes the vector along the loop, right? The vector along the loop is denoted by the DL vector. Right. So once we want to take the component of electric field along the loop, we need to take the dot product between the electric field and the DL vector. So once we take the dot product, we can find the electric field along the loop. Right. So electric field along the loop is coming. Electric field along the loop is coming. Right. So that is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux across the surface area that, that we consider and uh, minus sign of that. Okay. So this dabba over dabba t shows the rate of change, rate of change with respect to time. Right. With respect to time. And uh, b dot dA shows the amount of total magnetic flux through the surface total magnetic flux through the surface. Right, so, so that shows that the, uh, the total magnetic flux through the surface uh, and uh, the rate of change of that total magnetic flux causes a certain electric field to get generated along the loop uh, and the direction of the electric field that is generated will be opposite to the direction of the rate of change of flux of the magnetic field. Okay, so I hope it is clear. If you have questions, you can ask. So that is basically the integral form. Once we talk about the differential form, we are considering the amount of electric field that is created in a certain unit uh, unit length of the metal loop. So once we take a unit length of the metal loop, the amount of uh, electric field that is created at that location is equal to the uh, rate of change of magnetic flux along that uh, metal loop, right? So the amount of electric field that is created is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux uh, and also it is minus to the direction of rate of change of magnetic flux. So uh, the because of the effect of uh, the nature opposing the uh, change in the flux. So because of that nature, uh, we need to add the minus sign to show that the electromotive force, right, the electromotive force or the uh, that or the resultant electric field that is generated is generated in the opposite direction to the anticipated direction where, 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 
when we uh, change the magnetic field across the uh, closed loop. Okay. If you have questions, you can ask. Next, I'm going to discuss about the uh, the uh, the Ampere's law. Ampere's law is defined as the magnetomotive force around a closed path Um, the magnetomotive force around the closed path is equal is uh, equal to the total uh, um, electric field and uh, to the is equal to the um, total electric field and the total charge density in the surface. Right. is equal to the total charge density um, right so uh, the magnetomotive force is equal to the total uh, total rate of change of electric field and the equal to the total rate of change of electric field and in electric field and the uh, charge charge current density charge current in the surface 
so basically it is denoted mathematically uh, using integral form like this so uh, we can denote the uh, integral form like this and the differential form like this. Right, so the curl of B is equal to mu naught J plus mu naught epsilon naught daba E over daba T. J in here is the current density. So current density is denoted by current over surface area. So the current density is denoted as the density of the current per unit area. Okay, so J is denoting the current density, which denotes the amount of current per unit area. And uh, in here, this is uh, this capital I is denoting the total charge current in the surface. Okay, so those are the things related to the mathematical model of the Ampere's law, right? So once once we have the Ampere's law, uh, the Ampere's law can be denoted visually using uh, this type of uh, figure where we change the electric field across a certain surface. So there's a certain surface and we change the electric field ac across that surface, right? So we change the electric field across that surface. And then the rate of change of that electric field along this surface determines the amount of magnetic field that is created around, around this uh, surface. So the magnetomotive force is created actually on the outer edge of this surface as the magnetomotive phase force magnetomotive force is created on the outer edge of the surface on the outer edge of the surface of the surface and uh, the uh, the magnetomotive force that is getting uh, created inside the surface will get cancelled out only the remaining uh, the remaining magnetic field force is only on the outer edge of the this surface okay and uh, the magnetomotive force that is created on the edge of this surface is created due to the change of electric field electric field flux over this surface and also due to the uh, free charge electric charge uh, electric charge currents that are in on the surface so there are electric charge currents formed on the surface due to the existence of uh, free uh, charges free charge particles uh, such as positive and negative charges so due to this existence or presence of these electric charges electric currents are produced on on this surface so electric currents that are produced uh, in this uh, surface uh, also contribute to the, uh, the magnetomotive force that is generated in the outer edge of this surface okay so the magnetomotive force is generated due to both the charge current on the surface and the rate of change of electric field across this surface. Right? So due to both those factors, the magnetic force, magnetomotive force is created. Right? So we can denote that using the integral form where we take the integration of the magnetic flux along the total uh, you know, metal, I mean, surface, 
uh, and basically along the outer boundary of the metal surface, right? So this is the integration of the magnetic flux along the outer boundary of the surface. This is taken along the outer boundary of the surface. And then uh, this integration is equal to the charge current in the surface into mu naught plus the rate of change of the electric field across the surface. Rate of change of the electric field across the uh, surface. Right? So that can be represented using differential form where we denote the amount of magnetic field, the curl of curls of magnetic field that is generated on the surface is equal to the current density per unit surface area and the amount of electric field flux change across that area. Right. So the amount of magnetomotive force that is generated per unit area is equal uh, to the amount of current density available in a certain unit area and the amount of flux change along the unit area, right, per unit area. So that is uh, the differential form of the Ampere's law, which says the, uh, which says about the magnetomotive force created per unit area. So per unit area constants, para, um, constants and related relationship is given in the differential form, right? So that is basically regarding the Ampere's law. So we have covered all the laws that we want to know to uh, discuss about the Maxwell's law. So if you have questions, you can mention. Okay, so about Maxwell's laws, we will discuss a little regarding the uh, the history of the Maxwell's law. So uh, the Maxwell's law was introduced by James Maxwell, who was a uh, Scottish uh, physicist, Scottish physicist. 
who formulated the set of equations that unified the laws that unified that unified the laws proposed by Coulomb, right, proposed by many scientists such as Coulomb, Gauss, Faraday, Ampere lens, Ampere, uh, Ampere regarding the uh, electric field and the magnetic fields regarding E and H fields, right? So E means electric field, H means magnetic fields. So regarding E and H fields, the many laws were uh, proposed by Coulomb, Gauss, Faraday, Ampere scientists. James Maxwell was the scientist who unified the laws uh, proposed by these scientists uh, and uh, introduced the concept that the electric field and the magnetic field are working uh, in, in unison to create electromagnetic waves. Right. So these uh, equations uh, that the Maxwell scientists presented are called as Maxwell's laws. These equations are called as these equations are called Maxwell's law. Laws. Okay. So the Maxwell's laws are used to mathematically model the behavior of electromagnetic waves. Maxwell's laws are used to mathematically model mathematically model the behavior the behavior of electromagnetic waves. So uh, the uh, also these laws were verified. These laws were verified experimentally. These laws were verified experimentally by uh, the scientist called Hertz. Uh, so this Hertz scientist is known as Heinrich Hertz. He was the, uh, I mean, person to uh, may do experiments and find out about the uh, accuracy of the of the Maxwell's laws and also show the existence of uh, certain electromagnetic waves such as radio waves, microwaves, and etc. So Maxwell's laws, there are basically four Maxwell's laws. So the law one is based on Gauss's electric field law. Based on Gauss's electric field law Gauss's electric field law okay so we learned about the Gauss's electric field law so that same law is applied here so it said that the total electric displacement
totally electric displacement through the surface enclosing a volume enclosing a volume equals the total the total charge within that volume right so the total charge within that volume equals the total electric displacement through the surface enclosing that volume it is denoted using basically this equation right there are two types uh, i i think i have mentioned earlier the integral form and the differential form so for the for the easiness we are going to consider the differential form the differential form we are going to consider for the easiness. So the delta dot E is equal to rho over epsilon naught. So rho is the amount of charge enclosed in a certain unit volume. Okay, so per unit volume, what is the amount of charge enclosed is given by rho. Epsilon naught is, uh, is the uh, permittivity in free space. So if we consider the free space, only we can use the epsilon naught, right? Otherwise, we need to use epsilon. So, uh, uh, this is an indication of the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, ability of, I mean, epsilon no, epsilon parameter is defined as the permittivity parameter, and uh, permittivity parameter tells us the ability of a certain media, certain media medium to generate to uh, generate electric fields and store electric energy right so the ability of a certain uh, medium to store electric energy is given by the uh, parameter epsilon and then we have the low number two right so based on Gauss's magnetic field law, Gauss's magnetic field law, right? So magnetic field the total magnetic flux through total magnetic flux total magnetic flux through a closed surface through a closed surface through a closed surface equals zero. So I will erase this. Right, so it is given using a mathematical equation and we can denote that equation as delta dot B equals zero. So the total magnetic flux that is going outward from a closed surface is equal to zero. And so the net flux is equal to zero. The reason is that the flux that is going out is equal to the total flux that is coming in. So an equal amount of magnetic flux is coming into the closed surface. So because of that, total magnetic flux going outward or the total magnetic flux across this surface is equal to zero. So those are the two first uh, Maxwell's laws. Then the third Maxwell's law. The third Maxwell's law, law number three is based on the Faraday's law. Okay, so it says that the electromotive force which is formed around a closed path is equal to the negative rate of change of the total magnetic flux through the surface bound by that path. So we recently learned about the Faraday's law. So therefore, I'm not going to explain uh, more about the concept or behind the Faraday's law. So I'm going to write the electromotive force 
around a closed path equals the negative rate of change negative rate of change in the magnetic flux the total magnetic flux through the surface surface bound by that path bound by that path so the total magnetic the total electromotive force is equal is equal uh, to the rate of change of magnetic flux along the uh, along that closed path so the magnetic flux the varying magnetic flux uh, is uh, is equivalent to the amount of electromotive force that is generating along this closed path. So the direction of the electromotive force that is getting generated is determined uh, by taking the opposite direction to the uh, anticipated uh, electric field uh, direction that can occur due to this uh, introduction of due to this uh, magnetic field int int introduced. So this law we can denote using the curl of E equals to minus double B over double T. Next, we have the fourth law, the law number four, which is based on the Ampere's law. Based on Ampere's law, So this is based on Ampere's law and uh, it is de defined as the magnetomotive force, the magnetomotive force or we call as MMF that is generated around a closed path, around a closed path is equal To the total current to the total current through the surface through the surface bound by that path okay so it is defined as the total magnetomotive force that is generated uh, along the boundary of a surface due to the uh, the rate of change of electric field introduced uh, across that surface and the uh, amount of charge available along that surface. Right, so due to the uh, free charges available on the surface through which we are uh, changing the electric field and due to the rate of change of electric field, a magnetic field is generated, a magnetomotive force is generated along the edges of the uh, surface. Right, so those are the four Maxwell's laws basically and uh, these Maxwell's laws are used to uh, demonstrate how uh, an electromagnetic wave is getting produced uh, due to uh, the availability of uh, the electric field and the magnetic field. So we can uh, denote how we how an electromagnetic wave is getting generated due to the presence of uh, a varying 
uh, electric field and a varying magnetic field. So the propagation of electromagnetic waves we will discuss. Okay. So in order for us to generate uh, an electromagnetic wave, first we need to have a, a source. We need to have a source that produce a varying current. Right? So we need to have a source that produce varying current. So uh, if we take uh, the alternating current circuits or AC current circuits, in those circuit currents, uh, in those circuits, we can generate an alternating current, right? So we can generate an alternating current, right? So if we take, for example, uh, an AC current circuit, uh, using an AC current circuit, we can generate uh, a current across a certain, uh, like, uh, so let's assume this part to be the AC circuit and this metal rod, these, these uh, components denote metal rods that are connected to the AC circuit. So uh, the AC current that is flowing across this circuit will move up and down, right? The current will move up and down uh, and it will alternate, right? So because of that, the current will vary uh, in direction over the time, right? So once we have a varying current like this we uh, we generate we we generate a magnetic field around that varying current source right so varying current source is this metal rod varying current source is provided used by this um, uh, metal rod like antenna right so varying current source could be uh, an antenna which is uh, which is uh, allowing a varying current to uh, pass through that antenna element right so there's a certain element source element which is generating a va varying current so once varying current is generated that varying current is able to generate a magnetic field around that uh, around that uh, around that element so let's say this is the metal rod right so i haven't i have removed the ac power supply component right that that component also can be drawn but uh, we will assume that uh, this circuit has been provided with that ac current and now the current is flowing up and down so this metal uh, element or metal rod is having varying current once there's varying current there's a magnetic field that is occurring around this uh, varying current. So that is based on the Maxwell's law uh, number four, right? So based on Ampere's law, we know that uh, magnetic field is created around uh, once there's a varying electric field across that surface. So varying electric field is produced, that effect is produced by this varying current here. So uh, the varying current produces the uh, the magnetic field around this uh, varying current component. So using the Ampere's law or the Maxwell's fourth law, we uh, we say that a uh, magnetic field is getting generated around the uh, around the this current component, and the magnetic field that is generated is also varying with the time. The reason is the current that is producing that magnetic field is varying with the time. Because of that, the generated magnetic field is also varying with the time. So due to the variation that we observe in the magnetic field, a varying electric field is generated as a consequence. So the magnetic field will ge generate a varying electric field. Right. So this phenomena we can observe at each point in this loop, magnetic loop. This phenomena of generating electric field can be observed at each point in this loop. However, we will take one point into consideration and we will observe the amount of electric field or the direction of electric field generated over there. 
So in this position, according to the right hand rule, we can see that the electric field is generated uh, in this direction. So the direction will be going upwards. So the electric field will be generated in this direction. So going upward and in clockwise direction. So electric field will be in this direction. And the electric field will be a varying electric field. So because of the varying electric field, uh, so according to the Ampere's law, again, a magnetic field is generated. Right, so the magnetic field creates an electric field. So that is based on the Faraday's law. So based on the Faraday's law, an electric field is generated uh, where the electric field um, uh, the electric field generation and its direction can be found by taking the uh, the direction of the uh, magnetic field. So we can take that the magnetic field direction is coming out of the out of the board, and uh, based on that, uh, using the right hand rule, we can conclude that the electric field is generated in this direction. Likewise, we can apply the right hand rule, and we can find the direction of the magnetic field and electric field that are generated. So the a chain of uh, electric electric field and magnetic fields are generated due to the uh, due to the uh, due to the uh, uh, laws or the according to the laws of the due to the I mean uh, varying varying nature or the varying due to the presence of varying due to the presence of varying presence of varying magnetic fields and electric fields right so due to the presence of varying magnetic fields and electric fields a chain of electric field and magnetic fields are generated right so this this generation of chain of electric field and magnetic field uh, produces what we call as an electromagnetic wave right so this chain produces what we call as electromagnetic wave, right? So this chain of electric field and magnetic field that are generated due to previous electric fields and magnetic fields is creating an electromagnetic wave. And that electromagnetic wave is propagating in a certain direction. And also the important thing is the Maxwell toll that electromagnetic wave does not need uh, does not need uh, a source a source it does not need a source to keep propagating a source uh, a source charge to keep propagating source charge or current to keep keep propagating does not need a source charge or current to keep propagating Right. So to keep propagating, the uh, wave does not need a source charge or current. The electric field that and magnetic fields that were created previously are sufficient to generate more electric and magnetic fields generated uh, previously are sufficient to generate new magnetic and electric fields. New E and H. Right? So the available E and H are sufficient to generate new E and H. Right? So So the conclusion is that a change, changing like varying, a varying current, varying current, current can generate varying magnetic field, right? The varying magnetic field 
right varying magnetic fields so i denoted magnetic field i mean using b here actually b is the magnetic flux density but it is also equivalent to the magnetic field so because b is equal to mu naught mu h so i can represent the behavior of uh, magnetic field uh, using the uh, magnetic flux density as uh, uh, so magnetic flux density so varying current generates varying magnetic field so varying magnetic field generates varying electric field this phenomena continues and forms the electromagnetic waves so this phenomena continues and uh, forms the mag uh, electromagnetic phenomena continues and forms the electromagnetic waves okay so 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 we need a varying current to produce all these effects right so with that i'm hoping to end today's class so in the next class i will continue uh, regarding the propagation of electromagnetic waves and i will explain uh, about the uniform plane waves